Hello, this is the Conquering Hill podcast with your host, Nicholas Gagnier, and I am joined by a very special guest, T. Marie. T. Marie helps people live their best lives. She is a certified life coach, health and nutrition coach, spiritual coach, yoga teacher, Reiki healer, minister, and author of four books. If you would like to learn a little bit more about T. Marie, you can visit her website at tmarie.com for all the ways she can support you in your next uh, best life that you um, can can obtain. There's there's nothing stopping you from living your best life, and Team Marie is there to help you and guide you. Uh, thanks you so much for joining me today, Team Marie. Thank you for having me, Nicholas. I appreciate being here very much. So, Team Marie, so let me ask you: when someone contacts you and they are looking for some guidance, some mentorship um, in regards to uh, looking for a life coach, what is the first thing that you ask them that they're looking for? Well, uh, we definitely get into a bit of a conversation around their goals and around what brought them to me. And that's to determine uh, if I can be of service to them, because there are some times where a person may need a clinician or some uh, other type of professional. So I always want to make sure I can be of service to uh, my clients and also to make sure that we're a good fit and uh, determine a course. As you uh, read off, I provide spiritual health and nutrition and life coaching. So I will ask them a series of questions just based on what's going on and where they'd like to be and what brought them to me, meaning what brought them to me in the sense of uh, what interested them about what I have, What, what do they want to achieve? And then we go from there. Wonderful, wonderful. And um, how 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 has your um, your success rate been in regards to uh, your clients? Do they contact you later on in life, six months, a year down the road, um, and say, "T. Marie, thank you so much for helping me. Uh, my life has becomes you know, I live in abundance. Everything is going great. Um, I truly thank you." Do you have people that reach back out to you later on and just thank you? I do. Uh, What I find is that people do share with me. Well, first off, usually what will happen is we will get into coaching and things will start to change in their lives pretty quickly, which is wonderful. So we're both witnessing the changes that are starting to occur as they are coaching with me. And then uh, they will usually provide some sort of testimonial. Sometimes it's uh, a verbal testimonial. Sometimes they will write to me or they will share with me. Or there are public displays of things that we've worked on together that they're now doing. And so it's very exciting. You know, um, coaching is great because we reach, we, as you see, like you say with this podcast and, you know, with your mission and your book, there's, we all have hills to climb. Then we climb the top of the hill and then we see other hills that we want to climb. And so coaching is good because it will help you to achieve a goal. And then if you truly are success minded and you truly are expansive um, minded, then you may want to continue working because you liked that you got to where you want to be quickly and you, and you keep going. But yes, uh, to answer your question, they have provided me with verbal testimonials. Uh, they've provided me with written. Um, and then we see together the effects of the work we do, which is very, very exciting. Excellent. Sounds fantastic. So let me ask you about overcoming fear. I mean, we live in a day of a day and age where, you know, let's 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 be honest. Fear sells, right? And there, if you put on any kind of news, that it's constantly throwing fear at you. You should be afraid of this. You should be afraid of that. And then they'll provide you some, maybe some medicine to to help you in that regards, or they give you. You know, a variety of of options, but they like to keep people in in a fearful state, mainly because you know it's easier to control people when they are afraid. So, how can we empower people to overcome their fear? Oh my gosh, you've asked me a phenomenal question. I'm very very passionate about the fear work that I do um, regarding overcoming fear. I started doing this work with clients years ago. I first published an ebook on the subject. And I now have a course on the subject. Um, there are 
smaller modalities I offer as well. And I certainly uh, can help a person regarding fear with coaching. And the reason why I am so passionate about this subject is exactly because of what you just said. So all of us have natural fear and it can actually be our friend. It is our protector. Unfortunately, uh, fear does also sell and fear does manipulate. And whether or not we consider ourselves subject to the forces, media, uh, advertising, things that are pushing our buttons of fear, we also have natural fears inside of us that keep us from living our best lives. They keep us living small. They keep us, um, you hit it on the head, some folks take medication out of fear. Now, granted, I'm not saying there's anything wrong against someone who who truly has a, a clinical um, issue that they're working with their doctor. But let's be honest, there are many advertisements that are advertising to just a regular uh, watcher of television at any age. And this is not correct. So we can overcome fear in a number of ways. And I'm very excited and proud about the things that I have because I use a mind, body, and spirit approach. So for instance, in my um, fear to faith course, you will be experiencing over 14 days at your own uh, pace, you'll be experiencing different things that you will do to help you identify how fear talks to you. So one of the greatest things that I've realized is that many times fear is talking to us and we just don't know that it's happening. So we might think we're being smart. We might think we're being safe. We might think it's common sense. And in actuality, it's fear that's holding us back. And I tell you, as a woman, I mean, this happens to all of us, but as a woman, the, ad the fear advertising that goes into getting our money is outrageous. I mean, for, for things that are very normal. So we can overcome fear by a number of things, but we have to understand it. And what I'm so happy about is that my methods allow us to do this without it being um, a very challenging, heady, uh, difficult process. Because I believe that just because we're adults, it doesn't mean we don't want to learn like children. We still, I believe, crave things that are easier perhaps a little more fun. And what I find is as an adult, often when we're seeking things, they're just made more complicated just for the sake of it's for adults. And so my, my overcoming fear um, course and seminar, it's cool because you'll get to do things and then you'll say, oh, this is how my fear talks to me. Or you'll be able to say, oh, um, I did this exercise today and I saw these insights about myself or I was scared of this and now I'm not, or I walked through this fear and now I have a level of confidence I didn't have before. Oh, these are the methods that actually work for me. And you'll know that because you've gone through a series yourself um, that will take you to get those insights that are specific to you. So it's, it's very exciting and it's very freeing because um, I was just recently speaking to someone that I love very much and we were identifying that fear was holding him back in a way, where he was talking about something that he really wants to do and has been wanting to do, and yet, and tell me if you can recognize this, and yet he had recently been provided with some opportunities to do those things, and somehow found that he had gotten so busy that he hadn't followed up on the opportunities. Tell me if that's not something that happens in all our lives. It does. It does. It's almost like it's a convenient thing that happens. It kind of gives us a way out by not actually pursuing that particular thing. Um, from personal experience, I I first wrote down a goal of mine and back in 2016 that I wanted to become a motivational speaker. And finally, uh, on New Year's Eve, I wrote it down again. I Me and my wife, we always write down our goals every New Year's Eve, and we, we cross off the goals that we accomplished a year prior. It's, you know, we'll drink our finest ginger ale. And uh, I wrote down again, you know what, I, I want to pursue this. And I don't know why I was fearful by never trying. Maybe it was 
I didn't think I was good enough, or maybe no one want to want to listen to what I had to say. Um, but I, I started down that path uh, starting on January 1st, uh, when I made my first, uh, YouTube video, um, sharing with the world that I want to become a motivational speaker. And without taking that step, we would not be speaking right now because Mm -hmm. this podcast stems from going down that path. My wife gave me the idea to, to start a podcast, to reach a bigger audience and have on guests and interview guests. And I really love the idea. And so sometimes when you overcome your fear, other great opportunities that arise. Now, I still want to become a motivational speaker. I still plan on doing that when I go back to the United States. Uh, I want to speak to people about the importance of, of living their dreams and, and setting uh, setting their dreams really, really high, their goals really, really high. And you can't obtain it. There's nothing stopping you. In the end, you, me, anyone, we are the only one that can stop us we say when to stop and we say when to go. So for whatever reason, whatever reason stops us in our tracks, could be fear, could be laziness, could be a variety of things, but we are the ones who decide, okay? In all actuality, we should continue to grow and continue to pursue that, knowing one day we will reach that goal, we will reach, uh, we will accomplish those things. And fear, it can be a funny thing, I mean, it, like you said before, it is. It can be your friend in certain respects. Like if you got that gut feeling, something's wrong around here. Maybe I shouldn't be here at this moment. I don't really like the vibe. I don't like these people that are around me. Sometimes that, that is correct, and you should trust your instincts, intuition. And um, but the isn't uh, maybe you probably know better than I would. Isn't the number one fear for most people is speaking in front of a large crowd? You know. So <laughs> yes. uh, why if that's a fear then. <laughs> It, it, what am I afraid? What am I afraid of? I want to pursue the thing that the, the number one people, that most people want are afraid of is speaking in front of people. Why do I want to pursue that? Right. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of crazy in that sense. But when you have people reach out to you, T. Marie, and they say that they're fearful of certain things, what tends to be the most common fear from people? You know, uh, a lot of times common fears are about being rejected. Right. Common fears are about failing. Common fears are about feeling or what they perceive is doing something. And I don't ever think that, but doing something stupid or wrong. Maybe they've been told that in the past or they feel like if I make this move, it might be, I might look stupid. I might look wrong. I might fail. Um, These seem to be the common fears. They seem to be around failure. They seem to be about uh, around rejection um, and about just like looking, uh, being outcasted by by looking or doing something that is not normal to the people around them. And and, and may I share with you, um, it sounds like you're in a great marriage. I, I too am in a great marriage. I have a wonderful husband and we do the same thing where we, we come together on our goals and we, we plan together. And, and, and there are a lot of people who do not have that. So most people want to make a change in their lives and they want to do something. And even if their um, spouse or friends or family is not against them, they also aren't necessarily supportive of them. And so even that they feel fear around it because they're like, well, no one around me does this or wants this. And so it's fear around usually being isolated, being uh, cast out, being rejected, failing, and and just looking strange, looking, looking dumb. And unfortunately, you know, those fears, if you look at the primary advertising, that's what those fears tell you you will experience if you don't eat, drink, smoke, take whatever, or you probably feel this, so take this, you know, they push the button all the time. So it's when, when people come to me with those fears, I recognize that they are natural, but we work right away to begin to face the lie. Cause ultimately those fears are lies and there are methods to be able to overcome them. And, um, we just get right to work on it. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, you're also a minister. How, what is the best method when you say inviting God into your life? What is the the number one thing you should do to start that process? 
Oh, the number one thing to invite God into your life is to simply ask God to come into your life. You, each one of us all over the earth have access to God. And when we request, God hears us. Some of us are going to have to walk through different experiences and premeditated thoughts around who God is and what God thinks about us, and it will make us feel farther from God than others. But that does not negate the connection we can all have. And it begins with the request. And so uh, I wrote a book called Invite God In, Prayers to um, Have Faith and Experience Life Changes. And that book is a series of prayers that are affirmative for someone who might feel like they don't have the words to say or they don't know how to pray. Some people are used to praying a certain way that is a lot of supplication and these prayers are very affirmative. They're positive that God hears us and God answers. So that might be a difference they'll experience as well. But even if they never got my book, you know, the truth is we all have a connection with God. And if we ask, if we want it in our heart, in our mind, we make the choice just like you did on January. You said, you know what? I'm really going to go for this thing now. And you did. And now you have your podcast and we're talking here today and you're going to do more things. You're going to do your motivational speaking by the end of this year. I'm certain of it. You're going to find a way to do it in Panama. You're going to start to make this happen because you chose it. And it, that's how it is with God. And someone might say, well, why do we have to choose it? And that's because God's not going to override our will. God's not going to force us to do anything, but God is there. And the fastest, quickest, easiest way that's accessible to all of us, just ask. And you can talk to God like you would a person. God can handle it. He's seen, done, and known it all. <laughs> so we just say, hey, I need you. I want you. I'm confused. I'm worried. Uh, I feel this. I'm hurt. Uh, help me. Whatever. It could be two words, one word, a sentence, a paragraph. God loves you. God wants you. And um, is he just ask. Absolutely. You know, I, I've, I've also this year, I, I want to become more spiritual as you, I'm sure you've heard the term plenty of times and, and get, become closer to God myself. I was raised uh, Catholic, you know, I was confirmed and, you know, as, as a kid growing up who I, I have a tattoo that says question everything on my arm. And, you know, what turned me off at one point was nine eleven. So I, I really just like, how could that happen? How could God allow this to happen? So kind of, I kind of drifted away. But within the last few years, especially this year, I find myself becoming a little bit more closer and then like almost ready to fully embrace um, everything that He represents and He and He and He does love every single one of us. And I know that is a a practice that you have to practice every single day, right? If you, if you, if you really want to go down that path. And I know, I mean, from plenty of testimonials that I've read of people that are being, that are becoming uh, born again, Christians and putting their faith in God and even become, be, being successful in life is, is a lot of it is tied with, you know, trusting in God and putting your faith in God first and, and it, it will help you and become successful in life too. So I, I find that that, connection there should be discussed a little bit more because if if we do love god and we love ourselves then whatever we touch we will also be loving in a sense too so um can you can you speak to that well welcome home welcome back <laughs> welcome back brother come on <laughs> <laughs> um yes absolutely so um you know God loves us, provides for us, and truly, I'm telling you right now, I'm actually kind of, I'm not even kind of, I am living a series of miracles right now, right now as we speak. So, and I'll just as succinctly share that with you just so hopefully whoever's listening and you can understand that, listen, God can be your manager, your booking agent your financial advisor, your timekeeper, your assistant, your protector, your bodyguard, your everything, everything. And you know what's beautiful about it is you don't even need to have the capacity to ask for all that. If you love God and want to be with God, I mean, the tiniest bit 
and you just start showing up, you will see his miracles in your life and they will be constant and they will be delightful. And I can, I'm telling you, I'm living right now in a series of that. So um, just shortly to give you just the picture of how right now God's moving in my life with timing, connection, etc. So right now I'm speaking to you from Joshua Tree, California, and I live in Detroit, Michigan. And I didn't think my husband and I didn't think that we were going to be in California this year because we were like, well, we're enjoying our home in Michigan and we'll just probably come back to California next year, like next winter, because we wanted to test out what it's like to be snowbirds and go, you know. Okay. So we had thought that we were feeling good and comfortable. And I was doing a series of mentorships for young girls through a joint partnership. And so things were really picking up in Michigan. And I was happy doing the work and continuing on there. So for sure, we weren't going to come to California. And all of a sudden, they did a restructuring of their program. That meant that I wasn't going to do the mentorship anymore. And that felt at the time, like a shock, like a little bit of a, wait, this is sudden. It's unexpected. Uh, why did something go wrong? You know, that feeling because you're on a roll and things are happy and they're good. And so we're going through the motions. And as my husband and I have our daily morning coffee talks, <laughs> he's like, you know, what, what's going on? What do you think it was? And stuff like that. And I said, you know, I don't know, but God's blessing us. God's blessing us. Something I know, I've seen him work enough that when things change like this, something's good. And out of nowhere, after this series was happening, we said, hey, now that the schedule is clear in a sense that we're not geographically tied to Michigan, why not test our theory this year and go to California? So we came to California. Now, all this seems like just a human whim, right? But I tell you not. It is not. It is our father directing exactly what I needed. Let me explain to you in a short list <laughs> the blessings that our father has given out of those little series of events. So since we've been here, my husband and I have been wanting a new car for, I would say, maybe three years. It had been 13 years with our car that we kept because we we like to be very responsible financial stewards and we didn't have a car payment, but we wanted a new car. Runs, our old one ran great, but it was time to upgrade. Um, on a quote unquote whim, random Saturday, let's just go see found the car of our dreams at half the price that we thought we were going to have to pay for the upgrade. Glory to the Lord. We saw our daughter for the first time in like six years and have been spending time with her and all this stuff because she also made some moves to different states. And so glory to the Lord. We've been getting to see our daughter and spend time with her. My beloved grandfather who had gotten sick with cancer and I was having conversations with him on the phone from Detroit and he was telling me he was doing chemotherapy. My grandfather, I got to see him like two weeks ago. We were coming back from a convention in Los Angeles. And we were passing his home. And I said, we're going to stop even though we didn't call, nothing. That was our father. Because I got to see my grandfather while he was lucid. We got to laugh. I got to talk to him. I got to thank him. And he just passed away on Sunday. I'm sorry to hear. This is what our father does. Our father will guide us and give us blessings that we don't even know to ask for yet. And it's available to all of us. And this, look, I'm no better than anybody else. All I do, I pray. I read a little bit of the Bible every day. I ask God, I invite God into whatever is happening. And I build my faith slowly like all of us do. You know, it took years before I would have been like, oh, what happened? Why, you know? But this time I said, well, I think we're getting blessed because God showed me enough. These are the things that happen. So I'm telling you, who is listening today that might be feeling like, oh, no, this unexpected thing has happened to me. How will I? Why did this happen? What did I do wrong? I'll tell you something. 
when we get into the action of praying and asking God and just talking to him, God talks to us and will show us things that he will expand our thinking, our lives. It's magnificent. So yes, um, that's just a short list. And we're going to be here. We're going to be here in California until the end of April. And I've already started to play and tell my husband, I said, watch, we already have a short list. I tell you, there's still more blessings to come. More to the list will be added because that is our father watch and see. And so it's, it's an exciting thing to be able to just really have that sensation of like God's with me and, and, and working it out. Fantastic. Awesome. Well, T. Marie, also, I wanted to discuss with you um, increasing personal power. So when you say increasing personal power, that I would, I would assume that that's different for every person. But maybe the methods to increase someone's personal power might be the same. When someone comes to you and says, I, I, want, to, I, want, to, I want to increase my personal power on this earth every single day, what, what would you tell them? I would ask, if someone wants to increase their personal power, the first thing I would ask them is about their habits and about their current state, because that's going to inform a number of things. Immediately, I will be able to assess based on their answers what can currently be either removed or uh, bolstered to start to achieve that goal. Um, and then, you know, we definitely want to look at what is this person's speech? Where is this person's focus? You know, what, what's happening there? Because our personal power, the closest thing that I can liken it to is physical exercise. We all have a body, okay? And we all have capabilities with our body. And some of the capabilities will be there for us and we take them for granted because they just happen all the time. But we will either increase or decrease our capabilities dependent on how we use our body. And so the same thing is with our personal power. If compromises are being made, if the person is viewing themselves and, you know, doing actions that are diminishing their personal power, that's what they're going to continue to experience. You know, but at the same time, this isn't just about, you know, because personal power can be confused with, um, it can be confused with, with conceit and narcissism. And that's not what we're talking about here either. We're talking about a personal power that is healthy, good, and that actually resonates good out in the individual's lives and the lives around them. Because true personal power is that. It is not a dictator. It's not a boss. It's being able to really be a leader in your own life where you're resonating good things and you have a value system and you have character and you have a way of being that uplifts not just yourself, but others around you. And once that starts to get exercised, because we all have access to that if we use it, then good things happen for everyone. And the person is able to really feel a sense of like, oh, I'm confident with my decisions. I'm confident with my opinion. I'm confident with the directions I take. I'm confident with the people I'm around. And, and again, not from a cockiness, but from a sensation of, I know because I'm, I'm truly walking the, the walk so to speak. So, you know, for someone that wants to build their personal power, regain their personal power, you know, that can be something that happens. I'm not really sure so much for men because I feel like men are constantly, I think for men, it's a different type of pressure. I think men are just constantly thrust in the position where it's assumed that they have power and that they have to have it. Whereas women, our power is something we constantly have to take back. And I think sometimes it's because it's taken from us or we're just kind of not expected to be given power in a certain situation. And sometimes it's because we give our own power away in service to others or et cetera. So it's interesting dynamics, but it's still the same. If, if a person wants to increase their personal power, we've got to look at, okay, what's happening now? Let's assess, do things need to be taken away or added to? And then we need to engage in the actions of building and refining almost like a muscle, that sensation of purpose, confidence, and um, actions toward really being in power for oneself. 
Well, Tim Marie, it sounds like you're doing amazing work. You you help others with their mind, body, and soul. Really, the trinity of our existence. How did you start down that path where you decided, you know, I have I have this power inside of myself where I can ha- I can give myself a better life and my family and friends around me, but I want to be able to share this knowledge with others and help others and empower others and inspire others to live their best life. How did you, when did you first start going down that path? I first started going down the path of um, getting better, doing better in transformation. I first started going down that path as a young girl myself, because I had to overcome some really powerful things. So first it was a, a purely, uh, individual mission. Um, I need to overcome. I need to get out. I need to make sure that I have a successful life. I need to make a difference in this world. And I became so passionate about those technologies and strategies and systems and, and the wisdom and the knowledge that I became insatiable when it came to finding that information. To this day, I'm always in study in addition to practice. So like I'm always reading I'm always listening. I'm always, um, you know, if there's places that I can visit because I love this, I genuinely love this and it is limitless and beautiful and never ending in a good way. So I started down that path and I started making differences for myself. Then I started helping friends and family, as you said, but I still hadn't made the true change until I'm telling you, I had two careers kind of, um, I had two parallel careers at the same time because I didn't really fully jump into this until, uh, gosh, I have over 25 years of personal and professional coaching experience, but just doing this and this alone, I would say, gosh, when did I publish my first book? Like 2016, I think. Um, yeah, it was a challenge to really just dive into this. I can relate to what you shared earlier, where you just say, even though I've helped people change and I've helped myself change, like, how do I go about letting the public know about this? You know, you you feel strange, right? You say, well, well, who's going to listen to me? Well, like, where do I go? Like, where's the place to do it? And um, so that was a little bit of a stretch. But I started doing this for my for myself then I fell in love with the strategies and the information and helping people. And then I made it a business because I couldn't turn away from it. My childhood dream was to be in the entertainment industry. And I was doing that. But this is something I love so much that I couldn't walk away from it. I literally was like, I have to quit uh, working in entertainment and do this full time because this I want to do for the rest of my life. And and I love it. Yeah, it's, it's very fulfilling. I've had a few people reach out to me uh, that I hadn't spoke to in 20 years and saying, you know, what I'm doing right now means so much to them and uh, keep keep it up, keep going. So just to hear, when I personally hear a few of my old friends that, like I said, I haven't, I haven't spoke to in two decades and they, they express their gratitude and they thank me for it, that that throws another log in the fire for me that, okay, I'm doing good. I'm doing great. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep doing this. Um, Cause that's where it all starts because we can, we can change for the good. We can change for the better and be healthy. I think that's always a work in progress uh, for every person, right? Because you don't want to be content and complacent, but when you, when you start noticing people changing for the better and for the good as well, alongside of you, that's, that's an amazing feeling because you, you are making a difference. And, as, as as long as this podcast reaches one person and it changes one life today, uh, whenever they listen to it, we made a difference. So that's that's an important thing that I always try to tell myself. No matter what I uh, create or whatever I put out there into this world, if, as long as I touch one person's life, as long as I can help them become the better version of themselves, it was worth it. You know, there we're, we we're in like the one two percent of the of the of the Earth's population are trying to empower people, right? And think about it, like how many people are out there in this world that are just trying to get by, just trying to live, trying to live a normal life, be happy with all of the the craziness that's going on. You know, the world is basically on fire, but we're out here and we're trying to help people and we're trying to empower them and inspire them to live their best life and to conquer their own hills 
and realize there's going to be more hills along the way. It's just can't reach the top of that hill and say, I, I, I did it. I'm done. No, you still have to be hungry. You still have to, to, to practice those methods of, of self-improvement and, uh, and, Listen, there's nothing's ever easy in this world, you know. There's there's going to be times when we get knocked down, but we have to get back up, and that's mm-hmm. important. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today, T. Marie. It was a wonderful conversation. Please tell our audience where they can find you. Uh, definitely connect with me at my website, tmarie.com. That's T. E-E-M-A-R-E-E.com. You can definitely do so much there. I would love to meet you, connect with you. You can send me a message, join my email list, shop, get tickets to events. Just come and let's connect. Tmarie.com is the place to connect with me. And that's also my, my handle everywhere, which you can find on my website too. So tmarie.com, that's pretty much my, my house. (laughs) Excellent. well thank you so much team marie please keep up the good work um you are truly inspiring thank you so much have a great thank you for having me you too bye bye and if you would like to support the podcast please visit amazon.com and search conquering hill 50 writing prompts for a dream chaser and also visit etsy.com and search conquering hill for all our gear (laughs) 